Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you this really cool trick that was posted on our community so you can get unlimited AWS free tier accounts without having to set up a new email or without having to use a different credit card. I, I'm actually coming to the end of my 12 months free tier usage, so this is gonna work well for me. If you don't know too much about the AWS free tier, I'd recommend looking into this learn more about AWS free tier guide. Otherwise, I'm gonna make a comprehensive video so that you don't ever get charged on AWS and you can also do hands-on projects within the free tier. For now though, I'm just gonna click create a free account. I'll leave a link to this in the description. So just to get started here, I'm gonna put in my normal email address. This is maximus at nextweek.org. Now I have already created an AWS account with this email address, so I won't be able to do it again. But here's where the trick comes in. All you gotta do is add a plus at the end of your name before the at symbol. And then you can literally type in anything here, like one, two, three, four, or test anything after the plus. And AWS will count this as a new email address, which is great. But the really cool thing is that this is not counted as a new email address for your Gmail. So all of the emails associated with this will actually go to my original email, which is maximus at nextwork.org. So I don't need to create a new Gmail. I don't need to set that up, it doesn't take time. And now I can continue creating my AWS account. For anyone interested, this technique is called plus addressing and it works with AWS at the moment, but fingers crossed that it never gets patched in the future. Uh, we can just continue going ahead now. All you gotta do is create a name for your account. I'm just gonna go maximus demo one, and then I'm gonna go verify my email address. Now AWS should send you an email to your original Gmail account or whatever email you have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check that. Now here you can see AWS sent me the code. So I'm just gonna go copy paste that in and it should be verified. Cool, now all you're gonna do is set a password. It needs to contain an uppercase, lowercase numbers and non-alphanumeric, which is just like exclamation mark or question mark, that kind of stuff. Just fill in your password however you like. Now for us, we're gonna use these for personal projects. So we're just gonna click personal and then go ahead and fill out this information here Obviously, I don't wanna give that away to you, so you should be able to do this part, hopefully. All right, so this is the step that people get scared about. You do need a credit card to create even an AWS free tier account. Now, you can get charged within the free tier if you go outside of the free tier limits, but at the end of this, I'll show you how to get unlimited free tier projects so that you never get charged. AWS will take $1 and then it'll be refunded just to verify your account, but if you stay within the free tier, you don't get charged anything. If you don't have a credit card, which people ask often, I'd recommend going to sites like Revolut or Wise to set up a online free credit card. It takes less than five minutes and it's pretty easy to do, um, but you will need a credit card to be able to create an AWS account. So obviously I'm not gonna show you my credit card information because I'll get hacked and I will be broke. So I'll see you in the next part. All right, so from here, you just need to confirm your identity. So put in your phone number and then they'll send you a code. Oh, and you also might need to do something like this. I always get really nervous doing these because I think I'm gonna do them wrong. There you go, I did it wrong. P-D-R-N-W-P, I got it right. Cool, so then AWS will send you a code and you're just gonna hit continue. Now you're gonna see these different plans here. There's developer, there's business, make sure you don't click those, just click the basic support free tier one and then you're gonna complete your sign up. Now you're gonna get taken to this page here and it's gonna say we're activating your account which should take a few minutes. You'll receive an email which will go to your original Gmail account or whatever email provider you have and you can go from there. Now, obviously, when you first get started in the AWS console, it's hard to know where to go, what to click on. Um, it can feel quite daunting, but what I'd recommend is actually doing some of our hands-on projects. They're completely free and you can stay within the free tier. Because as I said before, if you click on the wrong thing or you leave something running, you can still get charged within the free tier, but all of our projects are meant to be designed so that you won't get charged. Now, the website is learn.nextwork.org. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But once you create a free account, I'd recommend going down to the bottom here and clicking on projects, and then click on the beginner's challenge. Now within the beginner's challenge, there is project zero, which is join the AWS beginner's challenge. And that will show you the basics about cloud computing, why you should get into it, what kind of jobs there are. There's also a project on how to actually set up your AWS account, which hopefully you have sorted now if you watch this video, because it was such a good tutorial which means you should leave a like. But anyway, the first project that you can actually do is host a website on Amazon S3, and that is an absolute staple in AWS. Now, the really cool thing about these projects is that they will give you step-by-step -step instructions. And as I, said, as I said, they cost you nothing. You don't have to have any experience. You can do this as a beginner. There's a video guide. You can also choose your own difficulty with the step-by-step -step instructions. Um, and as you go through, what I'd recommend doing is you'll see these boxes here. I'd recommend filling these in because at the end you'll get a special surprise. Um, so fill in these questions. They're gonna ask you things like, how long did it create, take to create a bucket? Or they're gonna ask you for definitions, screenshots, that kind of thing. 
um, but you will get step-by-step -step instructions here. And at the end of your project, you can actually download documentation. Now, what I mean by this is either you can save your documentation directly to your portfolio, which I'll show you in a minute, or you can add these directly to LinkedIn. So I'll quickly show you what the portfolio looks like. As you can see, host a website on Amazon S3. And then here's my automatically generated documentation, which is super useful if you don't know much about documentation. What it does is basically creates your own step-by-step -step guide version with your own insights so that your friends can follow along or recruiters can see the work that you've done along with screenshots and know that you've actually built something valuable. Another way that this can look is on LinkedIn. Here's an example from a student in our community um, who's taken his documentation and then automatically shared it on LinkedIn. Uh, here's all of his work here, which to me is super, super useful because if you can show recruiters that you're actually doing the work and then documenting it, they're gonna be way more likely to actually give you an opportunity to work for their companies. And on our website, there's over 60 projects that you can do here. A lot of them are free, some are pro, but they're the more advanced ones and they'll also stay within the free tier so you don't get charged, um, but I'd recommend checking it out. All right, that is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We post a bunch of AI and AWS projects so that you can get hands-on experience and hopefully land that job. See you in a bit.